Pap Set presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The makers of Fabstead present each week at this time Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, are uh, some of the foods you usually serve hard to get these days? Well, don't think that means your meals have to be monotonous, because... There's a plentiful food that gives appetizing variety to menus in a hundred different ways and is mighty easy to use, too. I'm talking about Pabst Et, the delicious golden cheese food that comes in the familiar round package. It spreads easily to make tasty, nutritious sandwiches. Pabst Et also slices neatly to serve with apple pie or fruit. And it's no trick at all to make smooth cheese sauces with Pabst Et to pour over hot vegetables, hard-cooked eggs, fish, or chicken dishes. Yes, and Pabstet makes smooth, tempting rarebits, light, fluffy souffles, and it's a sure hit, melted on toast in the broiler. By all in all, you could count at least 100 different ways to turn everyday foods into exciting treats with Pabstet. Another thing, Pabstet is easy to digest, too, and wholesome and nourishing, a favorite with the youngsters. So serve Pabstet often. Ask your grocer for Pabstet tomorrow you'll recognize it by its distinctive round flat package. Remember, it's Pat's Head, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. And now, let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who seems to have been overdoing a bit lately. His legal counsel, Judge Hooker, has persuaded him to drop in on Doc Pettibone for a checkup. And while the judge stands by, the good doctor goes over the great man with a stethoscope. You know, doctor, this is a lot of nonsense. I feel fine. Oh, quiet, please, Mr. Gildersleeve. I want to listen to that heart of yours. Yeah, we take you now to Gildersleeve's heart. <laughs> take it away, Doc. Yes, Mr. What is it? Why do you look like that? What is it, Doc? What have you found? Don't tell me you found a heart. <laughs> you keep out of this, Hooker. This is serious. I'd like you to listen to this, Judge. Put this stethoscope on. That's right. Now hold the other end up to his chest. <laughs> Stand still. It tickles. Well, Stand still. There. Now listen. What do you hear? Sort of a rustling noise. Sort of a what? Sounds like a troop of boy scouts coming through the underbrush. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's the hair on his chest. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Hold it lower. Hold it still. Hold Gildersleeve still. Oh, no, cut that out, Hooker. I can't stand this suspense. The dark. Doc, am I... am I going to die? No, no, now take it easy. Don't spare me, Doc. I'm a sick man, I know it. Don't try to fool me. If my time is up, I want you to tell me. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but you are not going to die. No? No. <laughs> Did you hear that, Hooker? You're not going to die, but with that blood pressure of yours, if you don't do what I tell you, you're going to blow up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I'll do it, Doctor. I'll do anything you say. You name it, and I'll do it. Well, I want you to get some rest. Uh, rest, yeah. Fly low. Take it easy. Above all, don't get excited. Don't get excited. Maybe you ought to go away for a few days. That's what I keep telling him. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Listen, you meddlesome old goat. Well, the judge is right. Yeah. Why don't you close up the house and take the kids and go fishing? Say, you know, I haven't been fishing in 20 years. Best thing in the world for the nerves, isn't it, Doc? Nothing like it. Yes, sir. I used to be quite a flycaster in my day. A regular Isaac Walpole. <laughs> well, then the place for you is Lake Heckmatack. You can rent a little cabin up there and... Jump. Are there any fish? Are there any fish? You know that big trout that hangs over the sideboard in my dining room? Yes. Lake Hackmatack. Yes. Say, one of those wouldn't look bad in my den. By George, I'll do it. I'll take Marjorie and Leroy and we'll start the first thing in the morning. Come on, Judge. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, just a minute. Yes? There's one more thing. If, what's that, Doc? 
Five dollars, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Five dollars. <laughs> Hey, good evening, Bertie. Evening, Miss Gilfrey. My, something smells mighty good. It smells all right, but it ain't good. <laughs> Leroy, what's going on here? What on earth are you doing with all those bottles? Just making a little root beer. It, a little root beer? He's made 14 gallons. Well, that's how much it makes. You can see for yourself, Unc. It says here on the bottle, this extract is sufficient to make 14 gallons of genuine root beer. Don't you think you're getting into this thing a little deep, Leroy? 14 gallons. That's an awful lot of burps. Yeah, and he's used up... <laughs> he's used up every bottle and cork I got, and the washtub's still half full. It washed up? Oh, you don't understand, Uncle Mort. I'm not going to drink it. I'm going to sell it. Leroy, did you ever hear of the Pure Food and Drug Act? No. Well, you will. And you're going to hear the riot act if you don't get that stuff out of Bertie's kitchen. Where's Marjorie, Bertie? She's out back, Mr. Gilfreeze. She's been laying in a hammer crying her eyes out. Crying? Say, we'll have to see about this. Yeah, nothing but trouble in this house. The doctor's right. I've got to get out of here. You too, Leroy. Come on. You ought to know better than to muss up. Why, Marjorie? What's the matter, honey? Nothing. It's Doug. He was supposed to take him to the movies tonight, and he's standing her up. He is not. I'm standing him up. Huh? Wait a minute. Let me get this thing straight. He stood me up last night, so... So I'm standing him up tonight. Well, darling, if you're standing him up, what are you crying about? <laughs> it's Doug who should feel badly. I know. But he doesn't. <laughs> He's going to take that Helen Gibson out. Well, you told him to take her out. I heard you. Yes, but he's going to do it. <laughs> oh, that's women for you. Take my advice. I'll never have anything to do with it. Yes, all right. Lisa. Take it from me. The more you do for them, the less they appreciate it. I know, I know. Treat them rough and tell them nothing. That's my method. Take my advice. Leroy, I'm... why don't you start a column? <laughs> you tend to your root beer and lay off your sister. Now, Marjorie, I wouldn't waste any tears on a fellow like Doug. He's nothing don't but... Don't you a... dare say anything against Doug. <laughs> Stick around, Leroy. I may need you after all. <laughs> Remember, Marjorie... There's better fish than duck. Hey, right in Lake Hackmatack. Say, how'd you like to go to Hackmatack for a couple of weeks, huh? We'll rent a little camp and we'll do nothing but lie around in the sun all day and fish. What do you say? Fish! Yippee! If I wasn't asking you, Leroy, if Marjorie... Well, if there's going to be any fishing, there's one thing I'd like to know first. Oh, what's that? Who cleans the fish? Uh, yes, there is that. <laughs> Leroy, you're getting to be a big boy now. What's the matter with you cleaning the fish, Unc? Uh, well, I'll tell you. Funny thing about me and fish. I'm not a squeamish man, but if there's one thing I can't stand, it's cleaning fish. Because we haven't caught any fish yet. Yeah, wait a minute, I've got it. Hey, Bertie! Oh, Bertie! Yes, Mr. Gilfrey. Bertie, how would you like to go away with us tomorrow for a nice vacation? <laughs> Well, let's get going here. Let's get going. It's 10.30 and we were going to start at 8 o'clock. Come on, come on, come on. We're coming, Uncle Mort. Well, then what's holding us up? We're just packing the lunch. For goodness sake, we just finished breakfast. Now, you'd be the first to holler, Mr. Gilfrey, if there wasn't any lunch. We'll be done as soon as we finish these deviled eggs. Yeah, I don't know why it is every time we go anyplace, all the women in the house have to start deviling eggs. <laughs> have you got the thermos bottle? Yes. Have you got the steamer rug? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, Uncle Mort, why don't you just leave the packing to us? We can do it much quicker if you'll just let us alone. Well, I'm just trying to help, for heaven's sake. Of course, if I'm not wanted here, far be it from me. Why don't me. you go get the car out? Yeah, a man tries to offer his services around here and he gets his head taken off. Come on, Leroy. Hey, Uncle, can I back the car out? No, you may not. Why oh, not, Uncle Mort? Piggy Banks backed his car out. I can do it on it. You heard me. I said no. Well, why not? I've told you before, young man, you're too young. You're much too young to understand about cars. Oh. Now get off the running board. I'm going to start it up. Yeah. Have you been fooling with this car, young man? No, sir. But may I make a suggestion? No, you may not. What is it? 
Why don't you turn on the ignition? Turn on the... <laughs> yeah. It's a funny thing. I've been trying to start it that way for years. It's never worked yet. <laughs> Yang Wei! Look out! Hey there, young fellow. Watch out where you're going. Well, who the... What are you trying to do, Throckmorton? Run over me. No, Judge, but it's a nice idea. <laughs> That's gratitude. An old friend comes over to say goodbye to you, and you try to run him down. Here's a lunch basket, Miss Gill, please. Uh, oh, Leroy, uh, while you're resting, uh, go get that, will you? I'll open the trunk. Uh, one side, please, Judge. Leroy, what's all this in here? That's my root beer. Well, get it out of there. We've got to have room for the baggage. We can't take all this. Well, gee, can't I take some of it? You can take six bottles. That's all we'll have room for. That's all you'll have room for, too. Okay. The idea. I've never seen it. Good morning, Judge Hooker. Good morning, Marjorie. Well, it looks as if you had a fine day for a trip. Looks like a scorcher, if you ask me. I'm dying already. Yeah, it is a little hot. It's a lucky thing it's not far to hack attack. I don't like the looks of that left rear tire there. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. It's still got a lot of fabric left. It's still got a lot of fabric left. Leroy, come get these bags, will you? Uh, yes, Leroy, while you're resting. Seems like I have to do all the work around here. <laughs> By the way, Throckmorton, I'll be glad to sort of keep an eye on the house for you while you're away. Oh, the house is locked, Judge. I don't think there's anything to keep an eye on, really. Well, you can't tell. A couple of houses have been broken into around here lately, you know. Is that so? I hadn't heard about that. Yes, so if you'd like to leave your key with me, I'll be glad to drop around once in a while and see that everything's all right. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Judge. Mighty nice of you. Here. There's the front door key. Thank you. Uh, Leroy, have you got those bags in back there? Yes, everything's in. Uh, Bertie, uh, suppose you and Leroy ride in the back. Marjorie, you sit up here in front with me. Huh? Now, are we all set? Everything in? Have we forgotten anything? Let's see. Doors locked. Lights out. Bags in. <laughs> Leroy, did you... Yes, Uncle. Good. Well, we're off. <laughs> Goodbye, Judge. Bye, Rocky. Hope you like Hackmatech. If we don't, you'll hear from us. Bye, Marjorie. Leroy. Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye. 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 Ah, good old hooker. You know, this whole trip was really his idea, Marjorie. He's a sweet old thing, really. Yeah, he's a sweet old thing. I'm going to miss the sweet old goat. <laughs> well... Ought to be a nice trip. Who? Hey, Unc, what was that? Sounded like a blowout. I knew it. It's that left rear tire. Hey, there goes another. Oh, there goes our trip. Can you beat it? You work hard all year. You save your money. You mind your business. You try to take a well-earned break. Oh, no. <laughs> That's four of them. Oh, the spare. How do you like that? You get out, Leroy. I'm afraid to look. <laughs> I've seen some bad breaks in my time, but I'll be a... I mean, I'm, I'm a patient man, but good gracious to Betsy. <laughs> well, that's life, I guess. Bertie, did you ever change a tire? <laughs> hey, Unc, what do you think? Don't tell me. Let me guess. The tires were okay, all of them. Leroy, this is no time for joking. I'm not joking. They're okay. Leroy, I distinctly heard something blow. So did I. I'll tell you what blew. It was Leroy's root beer. That what blew. <laughs> I told him he put too much yeast in that stuff. Root beer. Oh, this is going to be one of my bad days. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. Everybody knows that fresh vegetables are good for you. But do you know the trick that makes practically any vegetable dish a real taste treat? Well, the answer is, serve hot vegetables with smooth cheese sauce poured over them. You'll make them even better tasting, even more nutritious, too. It's easy if you use Pap's Pet, the delicious golden cheese food that comes in a handy round flat package. All you do is melt Pap's Pet. In a double boiler, stir in a little milk and season. Presto, you have a grand smooth cheese sauce 
not only for vegetables, but for fish and chicken dishes, macaroni, rarebits, any number of foods. You'd be surprised how a luscious golden cheese sauce, the kind Pabst Et makes so easily, adds sparkle to everyday dishes, gives them appetizing variety that just calls for second helping. Yes, and Pabst Et spreads so smoothly, slices so neatly, you'll find a hundred delightful ways to serve Pabst Et, both by itself and to add cheese goodness to other foods. It pays to serve Pabst Et often because it's so nourishing. A fine energy food, rich in milk protein, and it gives you vitamins A as well as the milk minerals calcium and phosphorus. So ask your grocer for Pabst Et tomorrow. Remember, Pabst Et, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. Let's get back to the great guild of sleep. It seems that left rear tire held out. For as the morning mist roll across Lake Hackmatack, we find the mighty angler seated in the stern of a little rowboat with his niece in the bow and his nephew at the oars. Steady, Leroy. Steady as she goes. Leroy! That went right in my lap. I can't help it. It's these darn oars. Yeah. This is about far enough, I think, Leroy. Yeah, let her coast. That's it. Now hand me that rod. Rod, Marge. Oh, here, Uncle, you want a worm? Forget the worms. A true sportsman, Leroy, would rather die than use a worm. Well, then how do you catch the fish? Ah, uh, you'll see. Uh, young man, you're about to be initiated into the gentle art of fly casting. You see that little doohickey there that covers the hook? You mean that tassel? It, it's not a tassel, young man. That's the fly. You see, it's very delicate. The finest ones are so delicate, they're made of hummingbird feathers. Do the fairies make them, Uncle Mort? Oh, shut up. <laughs> There's a lot of angles with this young man, so watch carefully and don't be so smart. I'm watching. Now, this is how your true angler tempts the finny tribe. It's all done with the wrist, see? And the secret is in getting the rhythm. One, you cast it. Two, you jerk it back. You see? One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two. It's all done with the wrist, you see? One. You've been saying that for three days now, Unc. When do you catch the fish? The fish are secondary, young man. The sport is the thing. One, two. you think there are any fish in this lake? I've seen them. Where? In Judge Hooker's dining room. Oh, so what are we doing here? Judge Hooker has a stuffed trout over his sideboard that long. And by George, I'm not leaving here till I catch something. Can you beat it? Five days, not a single bite. Not even from a mosquito. Not one. Remember, Uncle Mort, the sport is the thing. The fish are secondary. Yeah. Give me those worms. I've tried dry flies, wet flies. I've tried casting, trolling... If this doesn't work, so help me, I'll go in after him with a club. Hey, Unc, look, look down there. What? Where? Down in the weeds there. Huh? See him? Ooh, yeah, and a fat one, too. <laughs> be quiet, everybody. Be very quiet now. <gasps> if I can just lower the hook down there without scaring him. Easy. Hey, you don't move. What's that, a mosquito? It's an airplane. Well, keep it quiet. <laughs> Remember now, fish are jittery. Easy now. Nice fishy. Come and bite the little worm. That plane's coming this way, Uncle. Go away, plane. He's diving. It's a power dive. Look at that baby come. Oh, the crazy fool. Look out, everybody. Duck. Oh, it's Doug. He's waving. Hi, Doug. Hi. Sit down, Marjorie. Hi, Doug. Oh, oh. oh. Leroy. Where's Leroy? 
None of your jokes now, young man. You come out of there. I'm okay, Uncle. This is no time to guard. <laughs> Everybody all right? That's right, Marjorie. You grab hold of the bull. Oh! <laughs> yes. Leroy, you grab hold of me. Yeah. I'll grab. Hey, look what I grabbed. The fish. I got the little son of a gun. I got him barehanded. <laughs> oh, he's slippery. Uh, put him down the front of your sweater, Uncle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now we can go home. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like summer fields. Bag of mouthful. Huh? I sure am glad to get away from that lake where have razzmatazz. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, with any luck, we ought to be home by dark. But hey, be sure and take good care of that fish back there. Oh, don't you worry about that fish. He can take care of himself. That's the powerfulest fish I ever smelled. Well, <laughs> uh, some fish are gamier than others. <laughs> Sort of have to expect that of a trout. That ain't no trout, Mr. Gilfree. Uh, what do you mean? That trout's a flounder. Yeah, don't you talk that way about my trout. Well, whatever it is, it's getting higher than a goat. Why, Marjorie, I don't smell anything. Oh, of course you don't with those cigars. <laughs> if you don't stop smoking those things, this fish is going to be chippered before you get him home. <laughs> <laughs> so are we. Uh, no fooling, Mr. Gilfree. Don't you think we ought to stop somewhere and give him a decent burial? <laughs> Nothing doing. That fish is all I got to show for a misspent week. If he bothers you, you can hang him out the window or something. Hey, that's an idea. Hang him on the fishing rod and stick him out back. Here, I'll do it. Now, don't let him get away. What are you expecting to do? Thumb his way back to Lake Hack <laughs> Yeah, that'll air him out a little. Well, what's that guy honking about? All right, brother, come on, if you're going to pass. Well, come on! Hey! What do you want? You've got a fish! <laughs> I know you've got a fish, you big dodo. I think the man had never seen a fish before. Mr. Gilfree. Uh, what is it, Bertie? I ain't sure, Mr. Gilfree, but it looks like there's some seagulls following us. <laughs> oh, fine. Yep. That's what this. is. They're after your fish, Uncle. They're after Junior. Yep. Step on it, Mr. Gilfrey. Yep. Pull in your line, Leroy. Pull in your line. Play him, boy. Play him. I have more trouble with birds. Oh! Go away, birds. Go away. <laughs> this stuff out of here before it gets any darker. Hey, don't forget that fish. As if we could. Yes. I got the lunch basket. Who's going to carry in all these bags? Thanks. Uh, Leroy, while you're resting, old man. Yeah. Watch your step, Marjorie. It's pretty dark. You? Oh, come on. Are you all right? Something's grabbed me. Leroy, what did I tell you about those croquet wickets? I thought I'd put them away. I'm gonna. Yeah. Look out for that mole trap there, folks. Gosh, feel that grass. I bet it's grown eight inches since we've been away. Leroy, first thing tomorrow morning. I know, while I'm resting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, somebody left a light on upstairs. Where? In my bathroom. Bertie, has that been burning all the time we've been away? It wasn't me, Miss Gilsey. Well, who was it then? I don't know, Miss Gilsey, but it's in your bathroom. Yeah, well, that's right. Well, come on, bring the bags, folks. <laughs> Boy, it's stuffy in this house. Hey, don't forget to put that fish in the icebox, Bertie. The icebox isn't built that could hold that fish. Uh, Miss Gilsey, Miss Gilsey, somebody's been in the kitchen. Uh, what do you mean? Tramps or gypsies or somebody. How do you know, Bertie? There's dirty dishes all over the place. Miss Gilsey, you don't think maybe it's been uh, b b burglars? Uh, b b burglars? Well, uh, we have to see about this, Bertie. Uh, Miss Marjorie, you and me better go count that silver. Shh. Listen. Huh? What is it? It's your shower, Uncle Moore. Shower? You didn't go off and leave it running. Certainly not. I always turn that little. What? <gasps> There's somebody in it. Somebody up there right now. How do you like that for nerve? Takes a shower before he robs the joint. 
<laughs> Quick, I'll call the police. It's no use, Leroy. The wires are cut. How do you know? They always are. It's the first thing robbers do. Oh, but you can't wait for the police, Uncle Mort. You've got to go up there and get him. You're right, Marjorie. If who, me? I'll guard the back stairs, Mr. Gilsey. And if he comes down that way, I'll part his scalp with this meat chopper. Uh, <laughs> yes, you do that, Bertie, but uh, do it quietly. And you go up the front stairs. Yes, wait a minute. Maybe we better think this over a little first. A lot of angles to this. Leroy, you stand by. Okay, Unc, I've got my baseball back. Marjorie, you sneak out and run for the cops. Well, here I go, if nobody stops me. Be careful, Uncle Moore. Yeah, yeah. How? It quit pushing, Leroy. I wish it wasn't so dark. I don't dare turn on a light. I'm a little vulnerable in the light. Well, here I go. To those squeaky stairs. It's probably these six dollar shoes. I mustn't get excited. The doctor said I mustn't get excited. I'll bet he'd get excited, though. Well, now that I'm here, I want... Uh-oh. I can see you moving around behind the shower curtain. What do I do now? Remember what the coach used to say, Gildy? Get him below the knees, boy. I wish I'd never broken training. Come on, Gildersleeve, give him what you gave Hardwick. 29337698 no That's why you suggested that trip. Why, Throckmorton, I'm hurt that you'd say a thing like that. Come clean, Hooker. You just had a bath. You knew it all the time. Well, I... <laughs> had to have the house painted. You know that. It was a disgrace. Yeah. I can't stand the smell of paint. It gives me colic. You wouldn't want me to go... No, to... I wouldn't want you to have colic. Anything I have is yours, Judge. You know that. Move in any time. Make yourself at home. Wreck the joint. There's one little thing, Judgey. About Lake Hackmatack. Lovely spot. Yes, lovely. But there's no trout there, and you know it. Now, there you're wrong, Throckmorton. You just didn't try the right place. Don't tell me. I combed that lake from one end to the other. Well, no wonder. You should have tried the place where I got mine. Where was that? At the Hackmatack Souvenir Shop. <laughs> <laughs> Let bygones be bygones, huh? Let's be friends. You mean that, Throckmorton? You mean you forgive me? Certainly, I mean it. There's my hand on it. Gildy, my friend, I take back everything I've ever said about you. Uh, seems to me this calls for a little drink, huh, Judge? Bertie, uh, bring the judge a bottle of that special root beer. You may think you've tasted root beer, Judge, but you're going to get an awful bang out of this. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Original music heard in this program is composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Dan Alexander speaking for the makers of Pat Step and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve.